This is an open letter for This is an open letter for Miss Mrs. or Miss or Miss Liz Cheney. Uh, hello ma'am, how are you? Saw your interview on Stephen Colbert and you were promoting your book and uh, we got to hear your perspective so this is an open letter with regards to your perspective and where you stand apparently you know, from where we see you stand let's basically put it this way here's where we see you stand uh, when I was 14 15 around that age I uh, spent a few years in Carson Long Military Institute that uh, was in Pennsylvania is in Pennsylvania Pennsylvania New Bloomfield Pennsylvania and this military school high school military high school although I spent one year of junior high there as well anyway this military high school was as you know historically has been a place where you know middle class a little above middle class but mostly middle class people would send if they come about an unruly child which was you know been uh, you know brought up a ninny they send these people there to you know become a man these military boarding schools so I spent a few years there and that was the case all my people that I was housed with were of middle class a little above middle class but mostly middle class uh, problematic children and I was I was sent there because I was not welcomed and at, at the household I was in so I was there for a different reason I was not uh, any there was no issue with my behavior I didn't have any behavioral issue to need a military academy to be of any use but what I did was I observed my surrounding while I was there and what I observed was middle class families and upper middle class but mostly middle class the 80 percentile or 70 percentile of the people which fit in within that category had sent their problematic kids to the school and I observed move the move forward the clock that was we we're talking about 1987 88 that's where you know Reagan just you know was just coming in or was just going out and you know and around that time I observed this was the case 60 70 percent of people could muster together you know seven thousand dollars a year eight thousand dollars a year to send their pro problematic kid not the good kid the problematic kid to such a school to be good so that was within the reach of the 60 70 percent of your population to send their their problematic kid to a seven thousand dollar a year school uh, to be okay to be good what you move forward and about a decade ago internet was available to everybody so I looked up my old school and I noticed that the new year books for the past decade or so for the past 20 years for the past at least 10 years we were talking about 10 years ago I looked started looking this up the school Carson Long Military Institute online I started looking it up and I would 
uh, you know, I would see the yearbook, year picture, yearly pictures or yearbook or whatever we call it, that half the students in this school were Chinese. Not for any malicious activity. They were just wanting to come to a cheap boarding school. Cheap boarding school. What, what kind of, why, why we're calling it cheap? Uh, you know, nobody, the middle class, cannot put, send their, their problematic kids to a cheap school to become okay. 70% of the population, the population that used to be Americans, who used to send their, 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 their problematic kids there, were basically they couldn't afford it anymore. It, the Carson Long Military Institute, beautiful place, was sitting there and it just needs somebody to pay this fee to come and sit in the fucking classroom. So, because Americans didn't have any, the, the problematic kids haven't gone away. It's just that the place that used to, you know, bring them up, they can't, they can't afford to pay that price. So who's willing to pay seven thousand, ten thousand? I don't know. Later on, I'm sure twenty years later, it was no longer, was no longer seven thousand. It was like seventeen thousand. But still, so 17,000 a year for a problematic 14-year-old, 15-year-old, 16-year-old, they, there wasn't money there. Therefore, the students of Carson Long Military, Military Institute were not, and not, not, not all Chinese, Japanese. It was Japanese, Chinese, Asians. Asians, half the school, Carson Long Military Institute were Asians. Okay, that's fine. The, the problem is not the Asians because the Asians were just filling in the seats that needed filling. You, you, you folks try to, are trying to blame China or Russia or... No, no, no such thing. You know, Walmart got fat. But manufacturing, when it moved away, I mean, you can share technology without actually, sh you know, trying to find some slaves somewhere. This is what happens. You, you, this, 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 this transfer of technology was not a, you know, was not a very. Uh, what's the correct word for it? Was not a very, you know, was not out of our, you know, high class and wanting to, you know, help. Flat. It wasn't a philanthropic, ideal transfer of technology to China. It was. Based, because it can be philanthropic, but it was based on, no, 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 we need to, we, we like to make more money, so therefore we're going to use your labor because it's much cheaper than our labor, and we're just going to send the technology over there so they can produce it. They call it altruistic. It wasn't an altruistic project, you know, Walmart producing in one continent, and, uh, Retailing another in another continent. This was it wasn't altruistic. You can't transfer technology altruistically if you ever you primates ever get to that point. This is David but Nebula, but the problem is that the problem is that you haven't got there to share technology altruistically. So Walmart and Home Depot and everybody else just were happy to use slaves slave labor comparatively comparing to 50 bucks an hour five bucks an hour is slave labor here's here's the thing that you guys keep forgetting slavery it wasn't about you know i'm not going to give you anything i'm sure the master would give some pocket money to these folks to keep them happy pocket money is like the change you give to a child comparatively Slave is not about, you know, no, 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 from tomorrow you have to absolutely work for free. It's just that slave is when, when the slaves have to bunk together in the same house and have, have co, you know, co-habitat a house with people they don't, not really into. That's cohabitation. That was the form of that the bastard needed the slave to be... 
except to live in such a filthy condition so the master can have more money to have a bigger bed. It's just, just slavery is a matter of relativity. It's not a matter of color of skin. So when you scale up and you say, they say the you know, top CEO in Uncle Sam's land can earn up to 7,000 times the lowest earner of the same company. Yeah, it's a ridiculous number, I'm, I'm not sure. But it was within, I guess, within thousands of times, which we were, they were comparing that in the 1950s and 60s, it's an average CEO in Uncle Sam's land was earning maybe six times, seven times, which is the case still in some European countries, maybe 20 times, not, not 7,000 times, his, his lowest paid employee. The CEO should not be earning 7,000 times its lowest paid employee. It just, that's the, that's the issue. The reason, that, and, and why this is the issue is because, therefore, your middle class can have enough numbers, zeros in front of their paycheck, that they can pay for a you know, private school, a cheap private school, for a problematic kid. You, you see where I'm going with this? That's, those extra zeros were there and you know, relative to their income with certain zeros and their expenses with certain zeros, they made some kind of sense. They made some kind of sense. These zeros made some kind of sense that there was a leftover maybe savings $10,000 a month, a year, a savings of $10,000 a month a year that could have gone towards the schooling of a problematic child. That money was not there 10 years ago, was not there 20 years ago. Was not, you see where I'm going? Starting from Reagan, you, your you know, golden bowl of Reagan, you folks went, you know, zeros didn't, didn't start adding up in front of the paycheck of the people. Instead, the CEOs got double zeros every time. Every decade or so, two zeros was, was added to the CEO's paycheck and no zeros to the employee's paycheck. You, you see what I'm going, I'm, I'm not even going to go within the, you know, what is the minimum wage. Because all other wages, let's fucking not kid ourselves, all, all other wages, Miss Cheney, all other wages are based on minimum wage. This nonsense that Fox News has been pushing for fucking decades that, and you, you all you people, you know, you, Miss Liz Cheney and the other folks who are your cohorts, you folks were, you know, all over Fox News, and Fox News was pushing, this is the result of pushing the idea that, yes, no, no, the CEO deserves two more zeros a year because he works harder. You don't understand. The CEO works harder. He, 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 he needs to keep those two extra, extra zeros every year. And the lowest paid employees, he should be happy that he has a fucking job. So based on this idea that Fox News, and, and mostly, wherever I went, I saw Fox News for the past uh, two decades, a decade and a half. Wherever I went, I, uh, in official, in, in commercial, because, you know, boss loves a TV channel which says the boss is right. He deserves to have two, two more zeros in front of his paycheck extra every year. That's the channel that me as a business owner want to be. So these fucking employees understand that I'm the, I'm, uh, I deserve those two extra, extra zeros. And you were all, you, the politicians who went along with Fox News and such as and others, that go along with the idea that no, 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 the boss deserves all he gets. All he gets. He, mm, you have to love the boss's ass because it's very shiny. This idea was pushed. People lost this as comparing to the, you know, the money pool. The boss has a bigger portion of this money pool than the workers. So boss got more zeros, the workers got no zeros or less zeros. 
so slowly the price, the value of providing that kind of education to the middle class with problem, middle class with problematic kids. When I say middle class with problematic kids could do it, is basically saying that if you had a good family, you would take that ten thousand dollars that you had in extra savings. You would take it and you go to on vacation. If you have a problematic child, you may say, okay, I, I, I won't go on vacation. I will use my, this money to send my prob problematic child to a private school, such as Carson Long Military Institute. I send my problematic child over there, and yeah, we won't take a vacation. We just go for a weekend to the ocean and come back. Because, you know, education of that problematic child is more important for that family. People are very different. But the point is this, the money was there. One, the money, the, that zero, a couple of extra zeros was there uh, relative to the prices of commodities and everything. Extra zeros were there so they could use it either for a month of vacation, two months of vacation, or send, let's say Johnny was problematic to a couple of years of military academy wouldn't do him harm so they would do it but since you you know red republicans those republicans who doesn't want to you know kiss jesus orange ass those who don't want to you have been in charge since the 80s this is the same republican party i swear to god it's the same thing in my view from Reagan, it started saying that, no, no, those motherfuckers don't deserve it. That, remember that break, breaking of that, you know, uh, the, the, the unions with regards to uh, uh, air traffic unions? And just tell them to go fuck themselves. We hire new ones. They're all fired. That's breaking the union. The president breaks unions. What message does send, that sends to a CEO? The message that it sends, it says that, yeah, go ahead and add extra zeros to your paycheck and the paycheck of your friends who are stockholders of your company, add all the zeros here and no zeros over there. So the money pool goes up, inflation happens, but this is the kind of inflation that if you have a lot of it and if you have no none of it you, you, you ch inflation is re uh, related to the pool of the money the money pool now if this pool is evenly or not god forbid evenly manageably if the money is manageably distributed within the pool of money that the CEO takes home only 20 times his lowest paid employees, not, not 7,000 times his lowest emplo paid employee, if that take home money is not so lopsided, then there would be more customers for Carlson Long Military Institute of American. They don't need to have, have so many Chinese. The price will go up until it would be a little more more unacceptable for the Chinese to attend because the prices has gone up within his price range, within what he, a middle class Japanese or higher than middle class Japanese or Chinese or Malaysian can afford. But the problem is their zeros have not been added to the Americans' paycheck. It's just as simple as that. Zeros have not been added. That's the problem. Mr. Bezos, to put it very simply, Mr. Bezos, you know, adds like two, three zeros every year to his worth. This is all the human productivity that is going to one hand. I can't, I can't be against it because at least, you know, they're sending rockets to, to space. I can't say I'm, I'm against it. It's not bad, you know, pooling productivity only in one hand only in a few hand to be able to move forward within you know civilization wise yes it can make some kind of sense but 
you know, the Chinese are doing it without, you know, having Jeff Bezos have his own oil tanker, excuse me, yacht. His yacht has to be attached to an oil tanker. <laughs> Because, you know, all this, it burns so much fuel, might as well have his own oil tanker going around. This is ridiculous. And this is the situation that my, my pals can send their problematic children to back to their old alma mater. Because they don't have enough zeros in front of their paycheck. Simple. But Mr. Jeff Bezos has a yacht tanker for his oil tanker for his yacht. Seriously? No, no, I'm sure that I'm, I'm sure that you know logistically, Mr. Bezos has you know a logistic yacht accompanying his regular yacht to to supply and go to shore and bring supply because Jeff, God forbid, Jeff Bezos would wake up in a Malaysian motel. <laughs> Here's the thing, Miss Liz Cheney. I'm not, I'm not necessarily a Trumpian. In fact, you know, <laughs> I, I, I personally, uh, you know, it, it wouldn't be so beneficial to me not beneficial, it's just like he's a little more hard ass on anybody who's not white, like me. You know, if you're not white, you're under suspicion of why you're here, what are you doing? <laughs> so he's of that group. And I'm not, you know, I'm not a fan, but when you come and you say, oh, what did we do? You were just doing good. These people don't understand. What did we, did we do? And you don't take any responsibility for what you did do. After, I guess, I guess Reagan, Bush, Reagan, starting from Reagan, it just went from, you know, Reagan became a, an actor who, who acted as a president and he read what he, whatever he gave him, they gave him. Because he was, he had the mind of an actor. The, in the mind of an actor, the producer is always right. The director is always right. I will even, even, you know, suck his dick for it. This is the attitude in Hollywood. It's like the boss is always right. Whatever he says, that's how you, you get a name. It, it, acting is not that hard. But the idea that then that actor becomes a po top politician and starts selling the idea of, yes, the peasants should accept, expect less. The peasant, peasants should expect less. That's the idea of the peasants should expect less and it's okay for the boss to have much more. That idea was pushed by your fellows, Fox News, for 20, 30, 40 years now, from Reagan, who started promoting the idea of that, yeah, yeah, do whatever it takes. You got to take it up the ass from the boss because, you know, you need to eat. So the boss is always right. This idea was pushed by you. And that means the boss is always right, it means that it's okay for unfair distribution of zeros in front of paychecks. Which means my friends cannot send their children to Carson Long Military Institute. Why? Because First, they were running on half Chinese because the Americans didn't have enough zeros in front of their paycheck. So their population of the students were half, became half Chinese for, for the past 30 years. Oh, more and more, you know, more, some Japanese, some Chinese, some Hawaiians, some, I don't know, Malaysians, Indonesians. I mean, you know, it's good. It's not that it's bad. It's just that everything is relative, relative the, to the money they had to pay to their, their own private Malaysian school, you know, Malaysian private school in Malaysia, instead of paying to add money to that, they were paying it to, you know, an academy in the United States. And 
unfortunately, after Mr. Trump took over, the Chinese pulled out because, you know, the Trump people had the idea that China is the enemy and we have to shut the door and start a big brawl to see who's got the bigger penis. <laughs> so, okay, fine. So the Chinese pulled out. They got scared and they, they, they started, you know, not coming back the year after that. Four years of Trump and, you know, a little after or before anyway, I know Carson Long Military Institute had to close its doors after a hundred years of, ex more than a hundred years, more than a hundred years of existence. It had to shut its door because the population, the problematic kids are still there, I can assure you. But the population does not have the funds to send their problematic, it does not have enough zeros in front of their paycheck as comparing to the price of the school. They don't have enough zeros, so they can't send their children to use this service that this good institution was providing. Is that unclear for anybody? They just didn't have enough zeros. The boss had more zeros. Mr. Bezos has a oil tanker for his yacht. I'm not picking on Mr. Bezos. I'm just saying that you are not, nobody's watching this, this, this shit go down, apparently. Apparently nobody's watching. Because what is happening is, this is the situation. And you and your, your father, mostly your father, and then you, you, you guys are, are basically, or this other people who, you know, didn't like kissing the ass of the orange Jesus, these people are the people who were in charge up to now. What have you done? What have you done for me lately? Do, do you see where I'm going with this? Y you have agreed with more zeros for the boss and less zeros for the workers. You have gone along with this. And you, the, only, the only industry you have kept has been defense industry. And the only way to use the, 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 pro the, the, the production of a defense industry is to sell it or use it. And you have been selling and using their only, you know, one of the few remaining industries as much as you could. It's sort of like, yeah, we need to make money. The system needs to make money. We need to go to war. Because, you, you know, you, when you go to war, you, you have to spend a lot of money into arms industry and other, other related industry to war. This is your result, and you keep justifying these wars by, oh yeah, we gotta go give them. Which one? Which one were these? Are we going? This is was this the freedom cause or the, it was the democracy cause, or, or was was that which cause we're fighting over there? You keep you may mix them up because you forget which which war you're fighting for what cause. You know there there's so many of them. And so many to choose from, different causes. We go to war for different causes. Because our main industry is defense industry. And unless we have a war, we, our main industry will not work. Are you kidding me? Salute, ma'am. So my point, my point is this, that under your watch and under your father's watch, there are more zeros have been added to the CEO's paychecks and no zeros have been added to the, the lowest employee's paychecks. And here's the thing, and again, everything is relative. The lowest paid employee determines how much the higher grades get paid. So your, your Fox News has been going on and on for years that no, we don't need higher, higher pay for the employees. We shouldn't. 
We should keep it right where it is. And all the businesses that I knew of had Fox Fox running all the time. Because Fox says it well, how, how the boss likes it. Employees should expect very low pay. No pay. You should work for free. Doesn't ring a bell. Slavery. It's just that, you know, again, back to my first point. This, the boss did give some, I'm sure, pocket money to the slaves. But it was like, you know, it was a bonus. He could give, he may not give. He could have, if the, a, a nice slave owner wouldn't give to his top slave some pocket money, you know, just to keep him in line. You know, here's some pocket money, do whatever you want with it. I'm sure there were such cases. And the idea of that the, these peasants should expect less, don't, don't expect a full, you know, income, expect a pocket money. Whatever we, we throw at you, pick it up and be thankful for it. Peasant. I'm sorry, ma'am. I have a feeling you, you yourself have gone to private school. I have a feeling your children are going to private school. I have a feeling, you know, you know, most of the people you know send their kids to private school. But, but the bulk of the society cannot pay for a cheapest private school to, you know, bring their problematic kids in line. So, you know, you have become rich, protecting the rich from the normal de demands of a society. So, a hundred, over a hundred year old mil military academy that for a hundred years, the politicians knew that the people had to eat so, you know, the boss cannot earn too much more than the lowest paid employees because then the lowest paid employees have, are no different than peasants or, or slaves. Because relatively speaking, a McDonald's employee is a slave. Relatively speaking, it can be considered as your slave because you make like 10 times, 20 times what a McDonald's employee makes. That kind of makes him a slave wage. Slave who's receiving a pocket change with which he has to sleep in the same room with the five other people and you know, at least in the same house with five other people because he's receiving slave wage. You see where I'm going with this? We have been telling for 20, 30 years that, yes, you know what? Life is tough. You, the Republican Party specifically, telling the peasants that life is tough. Tough it out. If you get sick, go pray. <laughs> you don't need health care. We, we, the shaman, in our tribe, the shaman will only see a select few. The shaman does not have enough time to spend on you. I'm sorry, Ms. Ms. Liz Cheney, you're, you're running a tribe and for the past 30, 40 years until Obama came and still at, at, even now there, there are still many cases somehow they don't qualify. You have been running a tribe for the past 30, 40 years without proper health care for its residents tribe that cannot provide enough health health care for its members the tribe cannot in, in out, provide health care for its members it's a tribe put a wall around it pull it put it dig it ditch around it do whatever you want to do but are you is the ditches to prevent people from leaving <laughs> Here, here's the thing, you're not providing services to the tribe. And services is not being provided within the tribe because people don't have enough zeros in their paycheck relative to the cost. 
Why the cost is so high is because very few have a lot of it. That's why the cost is so high. And everybody is, you know, have been living, in, you know, vicariously. The guy is living in a one bedroom of a house that with five other people in four other bedrooms. And the guy is, but he's watching a very, you know, a show about a very rich person. And sort of trying to live vicariously through, you know, through his television. And they haven't noticed that, how poor their situation is. They're just living in a dream that is created for them every night in these, you know, sitcoms and, you know, uh, I guess live, live shows, not, not less sitcoms, but more uh, the, these reality shows. You're just trying to force your public to live like peasants, but you know, but at the same time, vicariously, like a king. So everybody is walking around with you know, fake gold hanging from their neck. Uh, you know, fake or I mean, when you decrease the, you know, the the the. The content of gold, the gold, you know, can become the cheapest gold you want. It's like if when it's 99% silver, 1% gold, then you can also call that gold. It has gold, <laughs> so they, 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 and, and the guy can afford that is not gold, but can not afford the real thing. And he had, but he has to. So he has to put his his TV on and live vicariously through through life. Go through life vicariously, just as if there's go, they're going through somebody else's life. They're seeing their life, and they're they feel their fight is their fight, and their laughter is their laughter, and their situation is exactly like mine. Uh, no, you're living in shit. There, um, you know, their situation is not exactly like yours. It's just that people don't feel that because they're living in their dream. They're living in their TV screen. They haven't noticed how poorly they're living. They just know that they can't send the problematic Johnny to a boarding school, a very cheap boarding school because they don't have enough zeros in front of their paycheck. And you, Mr. D Mr. Liz Cheney, who I'm sure you have been to private school, your friends are all have been to private school, their children are going to private school, I'm sure you haven't felt this. You haven't felt this. Your, your, your situation has just got better. You know, you know when you know people and you, they people know people and you know people who know people well you you eventually end up with you know very lucrative lucrative projects it's not that difficult it's just that you know your father he was a lineman who decided that you know his wife decided that being a lineman is not paying the bills so why not become a politician so he wasn't a genius he wasn't an intellectual he went along to pay, make more money. That was the objective. And this is what has happened. So, but you come and say, but when you come and call Bear and say, we have to try to stop Trump. Who is this we? Who is this we part? Because I don't understand this we part because we is my friends who can't send their school, their, their problematic kids, to their alma mater, if that's the correct pronunciation. They can't send their problematic kids to their own, back to their own school because they don't have enough zeros and you have gone along with this and you have kept the only industry you have kept is the war industry and that has been, you know, that has been needed some 
consumer for his product, so on the you know consumer his product is war. War consumes a lot of arms. You have been a man, your father, your family, other people at the top, those who don't like the, to chase the orange ass. You, you, are, you, you are the one who have been pushing this agenda. The agenda is we need to spend more money on the peripheries of the empire in order to protect our interest. Uh, we need to protect the borders of the empire and push for more influence and further influence in the empire, expanding the influence of the empire. That's, you know, that's what it is. Different projects like Israel and like Taiwan and like Japan, these are, these are projects meant to expand the influence of the, the empire. You know, controlled. Who, who says the last, who, has, who can have the last laugh? Who can have the control? Who's the big dick at this table? That's how, what we define an empire at the table of European Union and Uncle Sam, Uncle Sam has the big dick. Because at least Uncle Sam is United States. In Europe, the fucking British already tried to break it up as best they could many times. So here's the thing, Miss Liz Cheney, so when you I, I just I was I was just stunned on the word, the phrase that you use that we have to stop Trump. Like, okay, fine, whatever. I'm I'm, I'm I don't have a horse in this game. But have you noticed that during the time that we were in charge, these zeros were not added to the peasants' paycheck, so the peasants, you know lifestyle has depreciated to the level of a peasant and this we part is the is the you part while you have been in charge your when i say you i mean your you know old style republican the boss is always right give me money and i will dance that's the old that's the you know very old style i, I I'm, I'm not sure who, who doesn't get it that when you mix money with politics that's not good then then because democracy is the, is the will of the people but when you make make, make you know when, when mr romney comes and says you know corporations are are people the whole idea that corporations are people but people are not people because if people were people we would provide healthcare for all these people but people are not people some of them are dogs and less than dogs so they don't need necessarily you know, they may need to be put down from time to time, just like dogs, but they don't necessarily need a wet, you know, so, you know, it, really? This is the we part. We have been in this way going down, peasants not having, getting enough zeros in front of their paycheck, so they can't pay for a little cheap private school. The Chinese left after Trump came in, private school closed down. Had to shut its door after hundred and something years because you, this we part, this we part, after 150 years, 100, over hundred years of that school that all the people in charge make sure that these zeros match to a standard of living within that society, All these zeros match, the peasants have enough zeros so they can have a middle class life. You failed on that, you said, no, no problem. If I can make more money, I make more, more deals happen so the boss can make more money so the peasant can, can get, expect less money, you know, because the, these bosses are paying my politic, paying me, me for my political career. Because these bosses are paying me, paying us. We, we have to stop Trump. 
because these bosses who are paying me for my political career are telling me I have, we have been going down this road because these bosses, the rich people who are paying for my political career have been telling us we should go down this path. The path has not worked out for many people. And it's nobody's fault. It's not the Chinese fault. It's not the Russians fault. It's not the fucking Asians fault. It's not the Africans fault. It's nobody's fault. The fault is simple. You, the, the income, the income of your people is, has become lopsided. A few at the very top, the rest do not have enough zeros in their paychecks. And that has happened under your father's watch. And the whole Repub top Republican Party's watch from, you know, two terms of Bush to, you know, e even the Clintons, top tier of the corporate Democrat. That's why you and, and you know, the, the lady in charge who was in charge, Nancy Pelosi, that's why you two agree on so much. Because... The top tier of Rep the Democrats have gone the same down the same path. They have accepted corporate money so, so they can sing the song of the boss is right. Peasants expect less so the boss can take home, home more. How hard is that? You and Miss, Mrs. Nancy Pelosi have been singing the same song. Therefore, now you're both agreeing that... No, Trump is out. We don't expect Trump. I'm not, you know, again, I'm the first victim of a Trump idea. But you do understand where the frustration comes from and why you and Nancy Pelosi feel so close to each other now. Because you have, you have been okay for peasants expecting less zeros. No unions. Expect less zeros in front of your paycheck. Don't expect a middle class life. Don't expect to rise through the middle class. Don't expect anything. Go back to your you know, shack at the, at the other side of the plantation and shut the fuck up. Okay. Salute. Well, the peasants, January 6th, ma'am, I feel was, is the time that the peasants came to say hi. And what the fuck is going on and why am I not having enough, I'm not getting enough zeros in front of my paycheck. And Mr. Jeff Bezos has a tanker for his yacht. That was what January 6th was about. I'm not sure, I'm not again taking sides. I'm, I don't not I don't care or not sure whether officials were involved in that and it was real or it was uh, you know a theater I'm not sure they, they call them baiting I'm not sure was it or was it not but that's beside the point the idea was, in, we don't have enough zeros, the peasants came from other side of the plantation to the, the master's house and knock on the door, or try to break in the door and say, we are not getting enough zeros in front of our paychecks. That was the peasants coming on January 6th and saying, we, we are not getting enough zeros in our paychecks. Could we please have more zeros in our paychecks? But are you listening? Are you listening? The peasants are not getting enough zeros in their paychecks relative to the prices. Period. Relative to Malaysians, Indonesians, Japanese, Chinese, even Indians, the fucking Indians. And, you know, 
none of, relative to these guys, the Americans are not getting getting enough zeros in their paychecks. If they were getting enough zeros in their paycheck, for one thing, they would take more vacations. You know, if you feel safe and secure, you take a vacation now and then. The reason many Americans don't take vacation, Mrs. Cheney, and they have been taking less vacations for the past 30 years, is because they, or shorter vacations, is because they haven't been getting, in, getting enough zeros in front of their fucking paycheck. I'm sorry. Everybody's living like a peasant and Mr. Jeff Bezos just, you know, came from space and went with his, you know, tanker and yacht across the world. And his, his yacht was so big, they, they had to fucking bring down a bridge for his yacht to pass. Are you fucking kidding me? And Jeff Bezos, and I'm not, I'm just not picking on Jeff Bezos and the likes of Jeff Bezos. Everybody except Elon Musk, because I, you know, at least Elon Musk is, you know, doing something real. These, the rest of these folks, I'm talking about Warren Buffett. I'm talking about, you know, people who have been moving numbers around, speculating, moving up and down, and you know, these folks. Just, just these folks don't have been, you know, have been living wealthy of the productivity of many, let's put it this way. And living, living an opulent life, a very extravagant life. When I say not Elon Musk, I mean the guy, you know, we all know there, there are pictures of him sleeping on the fucking factory floor. So that's may be understandable. He, he just manages money well. well. He manages money and technology well, but you know the rest of these folks, you know, the gentleman who just passed away, Mr. Warren Buffett's, you know, co-worker, just sitting there and reading numbers and deciding what to put money on. Okay, but then when you see the paycheck and you're thinking to yourself, and and they then the Fox News and you and the rest of the whole business class and polit political class, which is very, very much dependent on the business class, trying to tell the peasants to, no, you should expect less. Fuck you. Well, we should expect less, fuck you, that's, thank you very much. Um, yes, we uh, try to go, do, go and do what you tell me to do, but come on. Dear lady, it's just, uh, you know, it's just heartbreaking. A lot of these drug, drugs are related to poverty. You have to, you know, for only for so long you, you can sit in front of the TV and live in vicariously through a rich person's eye while you're eating shit and pooping shit. While doing that, He's been living vicariously through somebody else's life what, via the TV, and you know, you know what probably helps his his vicarious life is a little his dream world is a little drugs. If he consumes a little drugs, he can you know li have a closer closer vicarious experience of living life through somebody else's eyes. That's how poor people watching rich people live on TV, you know, pass time by. And drugs probably helps them in, you know, having a better vicarious experience. Probably, I'm not sure. But the point is this, if the guy wasn't so poor, Maybe he didn't need the extra help of drug to live vicariously. Maybe he could have lived a normal life if he wasn't so poor. Do, do you see where I'm going with this, Mrs. Mrs. Liz Cheney? Miss or Mrs. I'm not sure. 
you see where I'm going with this? Drugs can also be related to poverty in this way that you know it's an escape simply put it's, a, it's an escape you escape from your miserable life that you have because you're so poor because the government the city people in charge think you should you deserve very few zeros in your paycheck while your boss gets to add many zeros to his paycheck every year from the productivity of the same system from the productivity of the same system please let's not kill ourselves the same system is putting out the same productivity now whether this extra product human productivity or machine productivity whether these extra zeros that are created this extra productivity that is created whether 90 percent of this extra productivity and the profit that is produced from this extra productivity if 90 percent of that goes to jeff bezos's pocket and only 10 percent go to the employee's pocket that has been your failure as politicians because you expect accepted a kickback from jeff bezos or you know Again, I'm sorry, Mr. Bezos, I, this is not personal. Uh, I'm just, you know, I just started this talk with your name and I'm continuing, but Warren Buffett, the, the, the guy in charge of Goldman Sachs, the guy in charge of BlackRock, all the shareholders, big shareholders of BlackRock, all the big shareholders of Vanguard and State Street and, and Kolohom, Kollahom is a, you know, I guess an Arabic word which means all of it. Yeah. I know a few words. So, <laughs> I don't speak Arabic. I know only, only a, you know, a few words. But the point is this. Under your leadership and your father's leadership and all the Bushites and Reaganites and Carter, not poor Carter, Reaganites and Bushites and even Clintons and even, you know, all of these folks have been bidding for the rich. Obama came and said, okay, no, I think we need to do something about healthcare. Mrs. Clinton just talked. So he did something about it. That's the step in the right direction. But your Republican people were the people standing steadfast against it. Members of the tribe do not deserve health care. Why? You can't, you can't produce sufficient health products, health related products, or you can't produce sufficient doctors or nurses. Maybe you should concentrate on that for the past 30 years instead of trying to spread the last fad. The last fad was what? It was democracy. Oh yeah, we got to go spread democracy. You know what was before that, Mrs. Cheney? Before that it was, we have to go spread capitalism. You know what was before that, Mrs. Cheney? Before that it was, we have to go spread Christianity. You know what was before that, Mrs. Cheney? You know, it was the Roman Empire, I'm sure. The Roman Empire had their own reasons to have to expand and, you know, go spread something, STD included. Mrs. 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 Liz Cheney, the argument against where you stand is quite simple. It's like 30 years, 40 years of both top corporate Democrats and all of Republicans have been for the rich, by the rich. To the point that a very cheap private school, which was doing good on this earth, had to close doors because the citizens of this area of planet Earth were not getting enough zeros in front of their paychecks. Under whose watch? Reagan, two Bushes, a Clinton. 
and and all of a sudden these peace folks are just the guys the top guys the vice presidents the senators all the top echelons of the society were watching as the peasants got less zeros in their paycheck and the, the masters got more now you go on Colbert and you say we have to prevent Trump from happening because if that does we no longer have a democracy God we, we, we you don't you no longer have Carson Long Military Institute it had to shut its doors because of your failure in management the peasants were not getting enough zeros and the masters were getting too many zeros that's simple math it's a failure of management but then you're telling us that no 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 you don't want that manager okay fine M maybe not that manager do you have a sane manager who doesn't take it up the ass from GE or you know Raytheon do you have a sane manager who doesn't take it up the ass from you know Boeing and Lockheed Martin do you have one Mr. Trump introduced himself as one that does not take it up the ass from you know Goldman Sachs because he doesn't have any business with Goldman Sachs this is how he introduced himself and that was the point that sold Trump do you have a sane guy who has the same quality that doesn't take it up the ass from BlackRock if you do please present if you do please present but from what you know an average guy stands you haven't presented one that's why Trump has highest the highest numbers you haven't presented one from the Republican side that stands with the understands that poor people need more zeros in their paycheck show me a re, the Republican candidate that believes that Americans need more zeros in their paychecks whether it be retirement checks or you know social security checks or paychecks whatever check they're receiving it needs a few more zeros and these zeros can should not be added to the money supply it should be taken from Mr. Bezos and added to his employees take you know for every zeros you take out of Mr. Bezos's paycheck you can add zero one zero to all of his employees Pro probably that's the solution show this is how Trump has introduced himself make America great again Americans here here's what the folks here when they say make America great again Americans here make Americans great again hopefully he doesn't mean by military power because that would be nuts you won't make it great again America will turn like like the rest of the planet will turn into dust and ash no so make America great again um, Americans hear that as make Americans great again when was America great in the 1950s what was America doing was producing a lot of doctors and engineers full throttle was had an educational system the best in the world in which America used to open universities all over the world yes Mrs. Cheney this is before your time before your time America used to instead of putting military bases up people's asses America used to you know put universities in people's capitals 
there was American University in Beirut and there was American University in Palestine and there was an American University in Baghdad and there was an American University in Tehran and there was an American University in Kabul. That was a thing. Even, even, if, even if those few univer those universities taught few subjects, there was still a thing. Even if some of the universities, all they taught was English, it was still a thing. It was, we're, we are here to help you, educate you. We have so much education back home, and education is so good back home, that here we, we have excess educating power, so we're going to put up a university in Beirut. What happened after the 1950s and 60s? Every one of those universities pulled out and a military base went in. We have to protect our interests. I'm sorry, the best way to protect your interests is to have universities there instead of military bases. You know, universities just naturally incline people to like you. When you teach somebody something, they're naturally inclined to like you. If you teach them something, naturally, that's normal. Yes, we have abnormal behavior too. But naturally, when you teach them, they tend to have a tendency to like you. But when you stick a bayonet up their ass, you know, they, they might not be, you know, in the mood to like you. What part of this is hard? You put a university down in Beirut, they will like you. If you put a military barracks up in Beirut, they won't like you. Military barracks is a bayonet. A university is a kiss on the cheek. One is welcome, one is not. But your, your policies during the time that your brand of politics, be it Republican or Democrat, during the time that you, your brand of corporate Democrat and Republicans, corporate Republicans, Republicans, during the time that your brand was been, has been in charge for the past 30 years, you have taken money from the rich and told the poor that no, you shouldn't expect much in this life. You shouldn't expect the health care from your tribe. You shouldn't expect housing from your tribe. You shouldn't even expect a job from your tribe. You shouldn't expect income from your tribe. You, you should expect to live like a fucking dog, a peasant, a slave. You should expect to be that or else go work your ass off. Go work your ass off. If you want to just breathe, have two jobs. Have three jobs. That's good. That's what Jesus would do. Have three jobs. That's the other part of the Republican Party, the church. Church that promotes that, yeah, yeah. The boss is right because wealth is good, Mr. Joe Austin. You know, and the rest of the cohorts. The, the, the pastors, you know, very rich pastors, these, these folks are, you know, again, this is the govern. the rich have the government on their side, have had the government on their side, that would be the Republicans and Democrats, on their side for, for the past 30, 40 years, and also on the side of the rich, has has been the, the the media. Again, you, you can buy everything. The one thing you can should not be able. Here's the thing, Mrs. Liz Cheney. The idea is. Okay, thank you very much with the representative democracy, because we could not all be present at the chamber to vote on on the subject. Because that was the case, because we could not all be in the chamber that the vote was taking place, therefore, and the idea of representative democracy became norm 
because not everybody could fit in the chamber to cast their own vote on every subject. I think this is the time that we can actually go to direct democracy and we actually don't need representative democracy. We don't need representative democracy because, uh, let's say, with an instrument such as Twitter, X, with an instrument such as Twitter or something like, you can actually have direct voting by every citizen. You don't need to be, imagine, you know, the, the voting apparatus be something like a, you know, a Bank of America online bank account. It's like you have a bank account and then you have a vote account. And then you go and vote in this account and everything is monitored and everybody with, you know, certain that qualifies can vote just like a you know bank account everyone you know is, is very well recognized that banks have put up such a system that they recognize you from the other side of the fucking computer so I'm sure such systems have passed their test and there there is a way that they can be implemented with very little margin of error that people can vote from their own home for policies and I think direct democracy can be implemented. I don't think there is only any more need for uh, representative democracy. I think direct democracy would work. And anybody who wants to vote has the duty go on, to go and research what they're voting for, gather as much information as they can. And internet is the, is the available instrument to do as much research as you want about any subject you want to vote on and you can actually leave these votes open so the moment 51 percent of the population feels a different way the policy changes and the moment the 51 percent of the population feels the other way the policy changes again and you can have an ai manage the whole thing Artificial intelligence, which manages these primates voting and keeps count and keeps vigilant, and the primates vote, have a direct democracy. If you want to take this fucking democracy down this path, you can't take it. Take, take, take the democracy down, down its intended path. You should take democracy down its intended path, which was 51% of direct votes, or even two-thirds of direct votes, with management by AI. That's the solution. And thank you very much for your service. But the problem is the, the rep representative democracy hasn't worked because the representatives were were not paying attention, were taking, were on the take, I'm not sure if the, the phrasing is right, because the representatives were not, were being elected by the public, but before being elected, they were selected by the rich. I'm sorry, this, there's better solution. The better solution is direct democracy. This representative democracy, the representatives, and I love the part that the representatives every time says, the American people want this, and then you find out that, no, no, it's actually, this is a speech that was written for him, for such and such a, this policy, maybe, you know, five of his friends with their shareholders benefit. It's not exactly the American public, but then, you know, with a straight face, the politician comes and says, yes, yes, yes. We need to do this because, you know, you know, the American people want this. Sort of like, no, based on what research? In the next time a politician says, you know, the you know, Afghan people want this, or the Mexican people want this, or the Congolese people want, the next time a, 
official opens their mouth and says, my people want this, they have to show proof. There is an artificial intelligence and with the available information, on, in very short term, artificial intelligence can tell you whether the guy who's saying that all my people want this is lying or they're telling the truth. Because this is this representative democracy in which what the, what the representative states as a fact that most of his constituent want something or don't want something, this is never fact checked. So he could be talking out of his ass. The constituent want education and health care, but the guy comes and says, yes, my, my constituent wants us to kick some ass in Ukraine. And then my constituent wants us to s keep paying these arms manufacturers more money to m build more arms so we can send it to Taiwan. Maybe we can start something over there. You know, you know, make some money buying and selling these arms, or you know, transporting these arms and putting things together and blowing things up. <sighs> Folks, you can grow as a civilization. You don't need to keep destroying, then growing, and destroying, then growing. You can actually, you know, grow without destroying. Believe me, it's possible. It's just, you know, you're so poor at finding honest people that Trump is passing as an honest person. <laughs> and when I say honest people, honest candidate, I mean the candidate who actually says, yeah, yeah, I understand. The problem in, in, in the society is that the boss is making too much has too many zeros in his paycheck, and the and the and the, you know single mother is, has too few pay, zeros in his in her paycheck, and yes, we need to you know produce more teachers and more scientists and more doctors, and how we do that, we pay more attention to our educational system, and how we do that. We take some money out of our military and put it in our educational system so we can have better students, so we can have more doctors. Dear lady, you haven't spent money in education, healthcare or housing. What you have spent money for the past 30, 40 years is in arms. Making them, selling them and blowing them up. <laughs> Making them, selling them and blowing them up. And then you're, you're wondering why they're, you know, you have to kiss the ass of the orange Jesus? He sold the message. He said, I want to make Americans great again because Americans are living like peasants. And they like the message. Americans heard, he said, I make America great again. Americans heard, make Americans great again. And because they have been living like peasants for the past 20, 30 years, the bulk of them have been living like peasants for the past 20, 30 years, so, f so f bad that Carson Long Military Institute, where first half of their students had to be, be Oriental because Americans couldn't afford it. And then after Orient Orientals left, the whole fucking place had to shut down because Americans can't afford it. Because you allowed Jeff Bezos to ha get more. Jeff Bezos, the Walton family, the Home Depot family, the, the Costco family, and the shareholders, this, BlackRock. You let all these people get rich. Productivity going up there, and the peasants living worse and worse each day until Carson Long military institute has to close shop and you're wondering why they why they tell you to kiss the ass of the orange jesus and then you say we have to stop the orange jesus who is this we i was just wondering we there is no we your private school 
Your children are private school. The rest of the we, they can't even send their children to a cheap boarding school if it's problematic because the money is not there. And none of them have been taking a month of vacation for the past 20, 30 years. And everybody expect them to have two, three jobs. There is no we. There is you, and then there is the 80%, 70%. This is the problem. Not sure why you haven't looked at it like this. I could be wrong. I'm not stating that I could be right about any of this. Do your own research. Do your own analysis. Think. Sit down and think. I could be wrong. But this is what I see. This is what, what I see. It's right in front of me. Carcelon Military Institute had to shut its doors because the citizens cannot afford its services. I'm very sorry. I am very sorry. It can, it can open again. Just understand what the fuck is the problem. What is the real problem? Citizens need more zeros. And just don't create them. Pull them out of Bezos. And Warner Bros. And Marlboro's. And BlackRock. Pull it out of their ass.